What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's transfer tips for game week 21. So I'm going to go through some of the popular players being moved in and out of people's squads and discuss whether they are good moves or not. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And let's jump into it. All right, let's start with Kevin De Bruyne, who's had over 400,000 transfers in ahead of game week 21. And sometimes when I talk about players, I'll try and give both sides of an argument. So the positives, the negatives, let you decide on which players you want to bring in. And some people say that I sit on the fence too much. But I can tell you for sure, there is no chance that I would be buying Kevin De Bruyne this week. Because as much as he's a great player and he's a huge differential, he's only 5.5% owned overall. There is just no guarantee that he starts in game week 21 against Newcastle away. And even if... The next game against Burnley isn't for another two weeks. So he's got more chance to build his fitness up. There's an FA Cup in between that uh, game in the, between that as well, you know, to get more minutes. There is still no guarantee that he will start in game week 22. And then as we get closer and closer to players like Son and Salah being back, we might not need them straight away, but at some point you're going to want them back in your team. And then De Bruyne's price point kind of gets in the way of that. So I know we're selling expensive players and there's a lot of money to go around. But I just don't think Kevin De Bruyne is the player that I would look to get. And I saw this tweet yesterday uh, that City Extra posted on Twitter. Um, and this is from Kevin De Bruyne. He said, I don't expect to be playing too many Man City games. And Newcastle next week is a big game. So I'll expect to be back on the bench. I want to play every game. But I know in the back of my mind, I need to take care of myself. So it's not a guarantee that he'll be benched but it's almost certain i would say i just don't see him starting against newcastle you've got to remember he's been out for pretty much this whole season um if we look at his in fact if i just quickly bring up his um his minutes so far he played 22 minutes against burnley in game week one obviously went off injured he's had no minutes since then so he was in the squad for game week 20 against Sheffield united at home but didn't come off the bench and then against Huddersfield in the FA Cup, he came on on the 57th minute. So we did pick up another 33 minutes there. But that's a very easy game for Man City. It's not high intensity or anything like that. I just think there's no chance he starts against Newcastle. So for me, look, if we get to game week 25 and Man City and Liverpool are both doubling and Egypt have won the African Cup of Nations and Salah's not going to be back for one of those uh, games in double game week 25 and De Bruyne has built up fitness and we expect him to start both games, Maybe I'll go there myself, but right now I would just avoid him. So a bit like Kevin De Bruyne, Ivan Tony's another player that's had hardly any minutes this season. In fact, he's had zero, but the difference there is that was through suspension rather than injury. And I'm a little bit more bullish on his FPL prospects compared to someone like De Bruyne, especially now he's available again from game week 21. So I get why people are thinking about him and why over 50,000 people have already transferred him in. I guess in terms of risks the only question mark is his minutes will he come back in and play 90 minutes week in week out right from the start and i suspect he probably will because he's one of brentford's key players they're also missing a few attackers as well like in burmo right now so i think he'll start against forest and i think there's every chance he'll get 80 to 90 minutes then the same against spurs same against man city etc the only Slight risk, I suppose, is he's not up to full match fitness. So he has played some games behind closed doors. And I guess in that regard, you could almost treat it like pre-season. And if it was pre-season, you would expect him to start in game week one and two and three and four, etc. So I don't see any issues there. I guess it's just that everyone else is up to full match fitness and he's not because he hasn't been playing. But you could also twist that and say he's fresh and everyone else isn't. So I think he's going to... I think he's going to start against Forrest, and I think he will continue to play. I think the fixtures on paper after game week 21 are not ideal. I'm just going to check I've got the right ones there. I think I do. Yeah, Spurs away, Man City at home, uh, Wolves away, Liverpool at home, West Ham away, Chelsea at home, Arsenal away. So between 22 and 28, they play Spurs, Man City, Liverpool. Even West Ham away is not super easy. Uh, Chelsea at home and Arsenal away. So it's not the greatest fixture run. I guess you can start building... A narrative right he's got a point to prove he wants to get into the england squad and stuff like that but so do all the other players right vying for their international places so i don't think i would look to get him because i don't think the fixture run after 21 is good enough and i guess as always it's not about whether he's a good option to bring in it's about whether you've got a good player to take out of your team so if you think about your front three like for most of us you've either got harland already 
or you've got one spot reserved for him. So in my team, the Alvarez spot is for Haaland. So Tony can't go um, there. I don't think many people are looking to sell Ollie Watkins at the moment. Like, he hasn't been amazing recently, but even in the last four games, he still put up a nine-pointer and an eight-pointer. It's Everton away, Newcastle at home, Sheffield United away, Man United at home, Fulham away, Forest at home, Luton away. It's a much better fixture run than Brentford have, and we know how good Villa have been this season. So that's another spot Tony can't fit into. And then my third striker at the moment is Solanke. And I don't think his fixture run is amazing either. But at some point, uh, Bournemouth are going to have a double game week. And if that comes soon, which is not guaranteed, but if it does, I'm going to want him for that as well. So I can't sell him. I'm just trying to think about which other forwards people might have. Like if you had like an Isaac or a Darwin Nunez that you wanted to get rid of, maybe you could take a punt on Tony. But I think for most people, you just ignore him because you've got three strikers that are decent. You've got other issues to deal with, like Son and Salah and Kudus and Huang going to um, various tournaments as well. So I like Tony. I think he'll do well. And look, Spurs away is probably not that bad of a fixture. Neither is Wolves away. But I think for most people, you probably don't need him this week. So as I said on yesterday's video, when I was talking about Son and Salah replacements, there was always going to be some midfielders that I missed out that people wanted me to talk about. And one of those players was Diogo Jota, who's had over 200,000 transfers in this week. And I do get that because I think he's a great player. When he gets minutes, he's brilliant for FPL. He's come off the bench against Newcastle and got two assists in game week 20. He's come off the bench against Arsenal and looked pretty good as well. But I think you have to be pretty confident in his minutes going forward. To, to kind of have him as an FPL pick. I almost treat him like Phil Foden, right? Both of these players are brilliant if they get the minutes, but if they don't, they just become a headache. And I'm not fully convinced that Jota is a player that's now going to start kind of week in, week out. But like you could say if he gets three starts out of four and in the other game he comes on for 30 minutes, that's good enough. And I'd probably agree with that, but I don't even think that's necessarily a guarantee. Now, it's hard to completely judge because he's only just back from injury. So he got six uh, minutes against Burnley in game week 19. He got 26 minutes against Newcastle. And obviously Liverpool played Arsenal in the FA Cup, and he didn't start that game either. So even, even without Salah there, it was Diaz on the left, Nunez through the middle, and Gakpo on the right. That's the team that started. And I'm pretty sure when Jota came on, he played on the left as well. And that's the, that's the key issue for me. Because Jota can play on the right, and he has done that for Liverpool before, but it doesn't happen that often. And I don't think it's a simple case that with Salah out, that is where Jota will play. And if that is the case, that means he's competing with Diaz on the left and Nunez as well, because he can play there. And then he's competing with Nunez and Gakpo through the middle. And that is why I just don't think that Jota is completely nailed on over these next four to five games. And I just probably wouldn't go for him, because as soon as Salah's back, and if Diaz and Nunez and Gapo, et etc., stay fit, there's just too many players competing for too few spots. And you know that Salah, when he's available, will always play right wing. And so when you get to that potential double in 25, it's not a guarantee by any stretch that Jota will still be playing. And if you are getting limited minutes over the next four games, you've got a Chelsea at home game and an Arsenal away game in there. And okay, Bournemouth away this week is good. Burnley at home in 24 is good. But you can't really guarantee that he's going to start either of those games. Do I think he'll start Bournemouth? I think there's a good chance of that happening. But I still don't think it's a guarantee. So right now, if I was deciding between Jota or Foden, I think given how many minutes Foden's getting at the moment, the fact that De Bruyne is probably not going to start for the next couple of games, I'd probably rather go there than buy him. So I am I'm a little bit more down on Jota as a pick compared to lots of people. But I know lots of good managers that are thinking about him. He's had over 200,000 transfers in. So there's something there which maybe I'm missing. But for me, I just think he's going to become a headache sooner rather than later. So I'd probably just avoid him. So after back-to-back six-pointers, Estupinian is really popular this week. Over 300,000 transfers in already. And I really like him as an option. If you've got a spare transfer and you need a new defender and you've got 4.9 million or less to spend, then he probably is the one to go for. Or if you've got a more expensive defender that you're looking to downgrade to provide funds for an attacking move, then go and get Estrepinian. The fixtures are pretty good for Brighton. The underlying stats are decent. We know how attacking he can be. And even, even though we know that, it's always nice to kind of see it. And one of the six pointers that he got was in game week 19 off the bench, scored a goal against Spurs, got the clean sheet against West Ham in game week 20, and he scored again in the FA Cup against Stoke, I think it was, as well. So 
We know how attacking he can be. He did play, I think he played centre back, left centre back against Stoke. Um, but I think that might be possibly because of injuries, but just because they're trying to manage his minutes as well. I think he's when he, oh, sorry, I think when he's back up to full fitness, he's going to play left back. We know he's going to be getting up and down that left side. So, yeah, I just think he's a great pick. I'm trying to think of like a counter argument, but I don't think I really have one. Like Wolves at home this week, Luton away in 22, Palace at home in 23. All fixtures I'd be more than happy to play him in. Spurs away is obviously a bit trickier for clean sheets, but again, he could go and get you an assist or a goal. Then it's Sheffield United away in 25 and Everton at home in 26. Even if you even if you wanted to use the counter argument that the defence has been really poor and they've had a lack of clean sheets, I do think they've been a little bit unlucky. If you look at the underlying data, for non-penalty expected goals conceded per 90 minutes, Brighton are actually top five defence this season. Now, I'm not for one minute saying that is where we should place them. I don't think they are a top five defence, but they're not as bad as they've been. And even if you look at expected goals overall, so you start including penalties and stuff like that, they're still a top half defence. So I think the lack of clean sheets they've had is probably a little bit unlucky. I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying that for the next six games they're going to get five clean sheets, but if they got one or two along the way, and you got one or two attack and returns as well, I think that is a perfectly kind of reasonable expectation. For Estrepinian to get three to four returns total over six games is something he can do. And obviously, he's only 4.9 million. Also, we're in a position in FPL where a lot of people already have Trent or they've already got a plan to get him. Then outside of that, Trippier not doing great at the moment. Even Pedro Porro is not a guarantee for clean sheets either. And he's 0.8 million more expensive. And then after that, like which other defenders are really standouts that you have to own right now? There aren't really too many. So if you're thinking about Estepinian, great option. So another player that's caught people's attention recently is Alfie Doughty at Luton, who's a 4.4 million defender. And I think his recent returns have somewhat gone under the radar. I mean, not completely because he's had nearly 150,000 transfers in. But his last three game weeks have been 9, 7 and 9 points. So against Chelsea, they conceded three times. He got two assists. Against Sheffield United, they also conceded in that game, but he got the goal. And against Newcastle in game week 18, they got the clean sheet. So recent returns have been great. I think it's probably worth setting expectations here. I wouldn't foresee those returns continuing because as much as it's great that he is an attacking defender, he's got a great delivery, you need the clean sheets to back that up. And they've had one um, all season, which was against Newcastle in game week 18. And some people will say... You know, at home, they're decent. They cause teams a lot of problems. And that is true, but they still concede as well. So I wouldn't expect the returns to continue at that rate. But if you do need someone that's cheap to enable another move that you know can go and get you an attack in return, I think he is worth looking at at 4.4 million. I think game week 21 is Burnley away. Brighton at home in game week 22. It wouldn't be the end of the world to have to play him in those two fixtures. 23 is Newcastle away, much more difficult. Sheffield United, uh, Sheffield United at home in 24, decent game. But then it's Man United at home and Liverpool away. So there's not, like even Brighton at home, you would expect Brighton to score in that game. So you're probably looking at potential clean sheets in game week 21 against Burnley away. And even that I think will be difficult for Luton. And then maybe Sheffield United at home in 24. So I don't think you should bring him in as a player that you're going to play every single week. But he is a cheap enabler. He is someone that you can bench in most game weeks. And as we know, Luton have a double game week already to rearrange against Bournemouth, which will fit in somewhere. And if Liverpool get to the Carabao Cup final, that game in game week 26 against Luton will be, will be perspined. And it's probably going to go to game week 25. So within the next five game weeks, Luton could have a double game week. And although on paper it's not the greatest double, if you had Doughty, you would definitely play him because in game week 25 they've got man united at home and then the other fixture that would go in there is liverpool away now i wouldn't expect clean sheets in either of those games but he could go and get you an attacker return you got appearance points on top it's really not the worst option and just before that you got sheffield united at home as well so i would say for most people there is probably not a need to bring him into your team this week and if you've got an extra 0.5 million to spend i still think i would prefer estupinia but if you need someone cheap he probably is one of the best defenders to look at at the moment. All right, let's talk about William Saliba next. Not too many returns from him recently, and he does cost 5.6 million currently. So I do get why people are frustrated with him and why over 100,000 FPL managers have already sold him this week. And we talked about a couple of cheaper defenders, so Estepinian at 4.9, Doughty at 4.4. 4. 
And if you need the funds for another move by selling Saliba, then I kind of understand selling him for game week 21. But if you don't need the funds, I don't get why you would use a transfer to remove him before Crystal Palace at home. I know that Arsenal have not kept too many clean sheets recently. I think that Zinchenko missing, although he's not the best like one-on-one -on -one defender, I do think overall he helps that Arsenal team. And obviously, the more of the ball you've got, the more attacking you're doing, the less defending you have to do as well. And having Kivior in that left-back role is not great. But on paper, Arsenal is still one of the best attacks. So I wouldn't look at Crystal Palace at home and think that's you know, a difficult fixture for Arsenal. Obviously, Palace could score, right? That is something that could happen. But if I was betting before the game week started, I think Arsenal clean sheet chances are pretty high. And I actually spoke about Eze yesterday as a good replacement for Son and Salah, but that I thought you didn't necessarily need to bring him in this week because Arsenal away is quite difficult. So I think, yeah, if you want to get rid of him, fine. I just think I would only do it this week if you've got a spare transfer or if you need the funds for another move. Like in my team, I've got him and Gabriel, and I'm perfectly okay with playing the Arsenal double up this week, despite what's happened recently. Like they got no clean sheet against Fulham or West Ham or Liverpool. Uh, they got one against Brighton. They didn't keep one against Villa or Luton. Uh, they conceded to Wolves as well. They got a clean sheet against Brentford. So only two clean sheets uh, since game week 13. But in a lot of these games, their underlying stats are still looking pretty good. Not quite as good against West Ham and Fulham, but still not completely awful. So I just think this week is a pretty good game to play Arsenal defenders. After that, the fixtures do get a bit tougher right up until kind of game week 26 in that a lot of them are away, right? And sometimes Arsenal are pretty decent away from home, but it's not on paper the ideal fixture run that you would want. So it's Forest away this week. Then the home game in 23 is Liverpool. I don't see a clean sheet there. 24 again is away to West Ham, 25 again away to Burnley, and then Newcastle at home in 26. But even with that fixture run, just having Arsenal defenders doesn't really worry me too much. I'll be honest, right, for my own team, even though I've got the double up, I haven't given it a huge amount of thought because there's so much other stuff going on at the moment with kind of midfield replacements and stuff like that. I just think getting rid of an Arsenal defender is the least of my worries. But I don't know. I just think you need a spare transfer at this point. There's no way I would take an Arsenal defender out for a hit. And in most cases, I wouldn't even do it before Crystal Palace at home anyway. Like if you had one free transfer and it was Saliba against Palace at home or using that free transfer on Estupinian, I'd probably rather roll and then decide what to do in game week 22 instead. But I appreciate that people are just done and frustrated with Arsenal defenders. So if you want to get rid of them, absolutely go ahead and do that. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you listen on podcast, make sure to rate five stars as well. I know there's probably a bunch of players you want me to talk about before Friday's deadline. We'll have game week preview tomorrow, my team selection on Thursday, where I will give my own team a little bit more thought by then as well. And I have final thoughts on Friday as well. So plenty more time to cover all your questions ahead of the game week 21 deadline. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you again soon.